So a few of you are still asking about how to test. Now, um, Connor's done various things on his um, Instagram. One of the things you've got to make sure you've got first is that auto trading's on, DLL imports um, is ticked too, yeah? Um, so I've got some tests on this server that's just specific for testing. It's not as powerful as the one Connor's got. Um, but here's basically one that I did. So I'm not going to run one now because it will just break um, out of thought. But I'll show you. It doesn't matter because I've already got the results. So I'm testing gold here. I just ran a recent test because I've got in my head two things. If we go too far back, the market conditions change all the time. We need to be agile to those conditions to increase our probability of passing. Yeah. Um, whilst also understanding how that might have looked long term. So there's two there's two things here. One of the things I've got in my head um, that we're testing right now is working three months in arrears. So what that means is I have a three to one ratio of data, back data to forward data. Now, how that looks in real time is we would optimize and test for Jan, Feb, March. We would forward test that on April and see what result we got. If that was successful over the course of, say, two years, so then we'd do Feb, March, April, test for May. March, April, May, run for June. If that has a good run rate overall in terms of a higher data sequence of testing, then that tells us that as we get into December, I could run September, October, November, whatever that comes back with, we run for December. Yeah. But there's a lot of work to go into that to see if that's actually right. It might be that running a six month or an eight month or a 12 month test will work better. I don't know until we do the testing. And ultimately, that's just an idea that makes logical sense to me to be agile. Market conditions. I had someone yesterday asking me for a 15, 20 year back test. Bollocks. It doesn't exist. There is no way in a million years any strategy <clears throat> can work through all of them conditions over 15, 20 years. It does not exist. What we have to do is continue to use the tools we've got to review market conditions and understand that things will change at some point. Volatility changes. Let's say you've got a GU, a, a pound USD strategy. Is there any way at all that that's going to have worked the same way over 15, 20 years with Brexit in the middle of all that? No, the volatility for that pair at certain times was insane, right? It's not like that now. Um, and it wasn't like it years before. So there's not going to be something that works all the time. Coronavirus, all of these things. Anyway, so this is a test that I was doing to try and understand that, OK, September and October was actually tough months where we've been running gold mainly. Yeah. Um, hit too, too many EPs ultimately. And I wanted to look at, OK, how can I flatten this out? So I um, to run an optimization, you would basically select slow complete algorithm and i've got complex criterion max selected now you could choose balance max and all that will do is give you the most profitable setting at the top however that's flawed because just because it's the most profitable doesn't mean it's the best and most robust you could have insane insanely high drawdown you could have poor sharp ratio you could have other metrics that aren't favorable so by using complex criterion max, what that actually does is give me a score based on MQL5. And that score is, a, an, is an amalgamation of a few other factors. So we've got drawdown, profit, sharp ratio, profit factor, recovery factor, etc. So I like to select that because it gives me pretty much a, a more robust approach at the top uh, in green that then I can filter that and go, OK, well, these are all green that's got the most profit or that one's got the lowest drawdown. Yeah. So that's helpful. So when you're optimizing, this is how your screen should look. We've got slow, complete algorithm. I've got a bit of a delay in there, um, which I've checked with server latency. I've got every tick based on real ticks. Also, I'm on BRK server. So um, I'm this is my priority, really. The BRK server, when you're testing every tick based on real ticks for 2021, I'm getting 100 percent data on everything on every month. Yeah. If I go further back, it goes to shit. So um, we're going to have to have, again, multiple approaches for what we come to the to the market with, because we're going to want some longer term data, too, that we'll use tick data suite for. But for challenges and stuff, this can work fine. 
Um, so then we go into inputs and we tick to the left here what we want to optimize. Yeah. So on this test, I had 1,536 combinations. That's OK. Bear in mind on Connor's stupidly powerful BPS that we are hiring per minute for um, that had uh, 150 odd, I think, combinations, 150,000 combinations, by the way, because what we wanted to do was just increase this fishing net have a bigger fish in it and go oh, okay we didn't realize we could catch that fish by having them settings yeah um but they do make sense so sometimes like we would never have chosen to run a, a tight pip step on gold but the data obviously confirmed that that um, made sense too but it does cut us short as soon as we get a bit more of a move so okay 800 pips on gold a thousand pips on gold how does it look if we had rsi in are we obviously committing to the market when it's already moved. Yes, what levels and delay sequence might, might be probable. So when you look at this, when we tick this box, so if I untick that, that is then gonna run a test based on 200. But when it's ticked, I've got 200 to 800 with a 200 step in the middle. So that's giving me four combinations. So this is like a, a safe combination. You got um, four, numbers on a on a on a padlock let's say zero to nine um so that's 10 on each 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 that's the combination well that's what this is doing yeah pip step exponent um i've got tick so i'm optimizing i've got it based on one to 1.75 yeah um a lot of my tests that i'm trying to do and have done so far are based around a fixed slot exponent because I prefer it. I know everybody prefers it. If we can find an equity curve that works with a fixed slot, I know the Martingale police will um, leave me alone. Um, but also um, people know where they stand a bit more and it causes less anxiety. So I get it, right? Um, so that's fixed on this test. I wanted to see, okay, if we went to the market with a fixed slot running the gold three, 30 minutes and three RSI, how does that look? Yeah. I also, <clears throat> on this test, this is important. I've also wanted to start from a place of logic with um, daily drawdown. So I know we run nine, nine and a half. But if we do hit two consecutive losses, that is a problem. Yeah. However, depends on the settings we're running to if that's probable or not. Very unlikely you would get two consecutive without banking anything. You would normally always bank something in the middle, right? However, if we had that set at seven grand, we could in effect absorb nearly three on the bounce and not be out of the game, right? Um, which is important. So if we have that low enough, also there are there are instances, okay, let's me look at one of my accounts. So so I do 10 grand in a week and then I hit EP on a Friday and giving all my money back, which can happen. Totally get it. But if my data set over a period of time tells me that, well, I never really go above 4K drawdown. If I go above four, I'm probably going to hit nine. Yeah. So it, it, it also makes some logical sense to go, right, well, Darren, if you go above five, cut it off. Then I'd have made five grand that week. I gave back my profits. Yeah. But you also then need to accept that perfection doesn't exist. And there will be instances where it get, would have got to seven and reversed and you'd have saved an EP. So you've got to go, OK, how many more EPs might I hit? And what's the net result of that? This is why we can never make assumptions that just because one specific outcome happened, that's the right thing to do indefinitely. You need more data to understand that. Right. So this test was based on a 7000 um, max daily running loss um and you could even optimize that i could go okay well you tell me uh, which i've done before but it adds quite if i add three more four more combinations here this number goes to seven eight nine ten thousand and you at home will never be able to test that you'll probably struggle with 400 you'll probably struggle with 200 i don't know um some of you have probably got faster pcs and you might be able to um to run that yeah um so you, you, you have to start with logic and specifics. So then you press go. And this one actually took me, I think it took 15 hours. Did it take 15 hours? I left it running overnight anyway. So you couldn't be sat here, run a 1500 combination and 
wait for it to happen. You'd have to just leave it. Yeah. So that's why testing and optimizing a takes us a load of time and is almost mission impossible for someone with a with a normalish PC at home. Um, so I, I I don't know. Just excuse me for a minute. My mum keeps ringing me and she never rings me. Let me just say I'm on a call. What's up? She just ring me, but not at quarter past nine. Half past nine on a Sunday morning. In case there's a drama. We never know. There can be dramas. Um, right. So anyway, sorry, that com that, 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 that's um, took my concentration. So hopefully that helps. Ask a question if not. So we've put in some parameters and then we press go. And then this magic happened. Whoa, what's going on here? OK, well, this is quite exciting when we get to this bit. Because we go, OK, well, this is uh, organized by result. This is that score I was telling you about, which is an amalgamation of all of these factors into one magic score. Right. Or I go, OK, if you tested on balance, then I can make the balance one come to the top. Well, that's the worst one. There we go. Make the best one. There we go. So I've got a 60 grand profit running let's look at some facts here so a 200 step with a fixed pip step exponent so two 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 no trade delay 1.8 lot 80 and 15 level right to be fair the most profitable ones are 1.8 but let me just check was 1.8 my highest lot yes okay so this what does this tell me well it tells me that the profitable ones max at my highest um optimization test so hopefully that tells you and you'd understand that I need to test higher than 1.8 next because we've already capped at my highest test. So there must be more profitable settings above 1.8. Yeah, hopefully you get me because that's what makes logical sense, right? Um, however, that top one, it's not got a great custom criterion score, profit factors lower than some of the others um, and the drawdown is quite a lot higher. So, okay, let's just look at the one below. OK, well, this one looks quite a lot better. I've got double the sharp um, sharp ratio. I've got a third of the trades, right? So although this in isolation might not pass, you know, 55K since uh, August wouldn't have passed every single month. But this could be scalable with a higher lot. Um, and it could be something that we use in a basket with some of it with something else. So when we run two or three different strategies at the same time. That also adds some diversification. And we know that over time, we've probably got some low drawdown on here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's that really. And you have to go through this and digest, you know, like, like this top one, really low drawdown. Yeah, really low, really low lot, because that's what's given this calculation overall. Um, but you know, how do we use that with something else would be the would be the question. Um, and then basically, when you found one, you right click and you can run a single test. Uh, yeah, and I've done that already. So um, let me show you that. Yeah, here. Um, no. So these are the other optimization tests I've done just while I'm on here um i had some good eu yeah that was quite tasty sorry just whilst i'm digressing so this was a five minute test on eu yeah five minute um with open prices so that was what that was by doing that it adds a bit of volatility in the candle which actually I've run other tests on other pairs and it's, we are better off with every tick on one minute. Um, but yeah, I'm just sharing what I've got. So that was a, an, a 10 month test and um, that doubled the account. That one did more, more 260K profit. And still I've got an 80, 80 score. So we are finding and unearthing some good stuff here, yeah?